Hello and welcome to the Joe Kakaka Christmas special. I'm Jim. I'm Sam. And I bet you didn't even think it was going to happen because we sure didn't. No. Nah. The surprising release, not really surprising, I guess we knew about it. The the, the thrilling release, like the, the, we were anticipated release of the two new JoJo pieces of media, of manga media. So these are two new spinoffs. Well, uh, one's a one shot and one's an actual spinoff series. Yes. So we wanted to do a Joe Kaka. Like it's then, the time of the month. Then jo- <laughs> it's, your, it's, your, it's the normal oh, time of the month well, we'll for get Joe there. Kaka. <laughs> but uh, while, while we're waiting in JoJo land, like hell, waiting the waiting room. You know, so while we're waiting, you know, Soda Ocean also doesn't have any new episodes, so this is the perfect, like, fill-in. Yeah, this, we- this is a perfect mixture of Joe Kakaka crusading through part three and part six and slices. Like, all of our content is coming <laughs> in the one. It's true. It's it's so serendipitous. Like, uh, I think we'll end up talking about the whole horse one first, but yeah. it's really, like, kind of perfect when this Jolene one came out, because it's, like... Everyone who's watching the anime will have gotten up to the point where you know all of the characters. Yes. So it's like, it's so perfect, I think, that that was so smartly planned. Yeah. Uh, but, except, yeah. Maybe, except everything would maybe a little bit but the Poochie stuff, but yeah. Because the Poochie's like, like it's a little bit established where this one is. Yeah. Um. But, okay, before we get into that, so yeah, this is, yeah, it's like a joke, Kaka. We're back, Sam. Yeah, we're back. The boys are back in town. <laughs> the boys are back in town. <laughs> So first of all, before we actually start, a shout out to the scan la- the scan later teams that worked on this like so quick. You guys are the real MVP. Yeah, it's really. I mean, we would not be here without the people who <laughs> dove headfirst into <laughs> uh, translating these, and it's just like it just shows how like tight the community is, how, like how much care there is for the subject matter that even like spin off side content essentially is treated with the same amount of uh excitement so do we do we know the the scanslation team name i want to need more yankees yeah i think that they did the um the whole whole horse one and then i think well fujiko one was a another team i think we did a live well jim jim and me did a live reading of it and yeah we actually had one of them join in there and they said they split the team up in half if i remember correctly even dog park helped out a little bit yeah the show friend friend of the show dog park uh did some some uh quality checking it looks like just a this is thank give everybody just give a good thank you to your scanlation team though no matter who they are what language like they're they're always just the mvps and shout out to so yeah as we as i said or sam said rather we had a little live reading last night so make sure you're subbed make sure you ring the bell so you know when we go live uh so you can catch those because then i kind of hide them somewhere Jim deletes them yeah um but uh one of the people part of the translation team was there last night uh cindy just want to give a shout out thanks for being there yeah answering some questions that was so much fun yeah thank you we always love that always show always give some love (laughs) <laughs> Definitely. And so without further ado, I think we're going to jump right into Crazy Diamond's Demonic Heartbreak. Good name. Which is the Whole Horse and Josuke spinoff. That's kind of how it was marketed. It, so... it marketed that, but like, it's funny because like, it always had the image of Whole Horse and Josuke, but like on the actual cover, there's like a little boing, like, boingo on there. Yeah, which a little, is great. tiny little boingo. Which, which... Is, which is really fitting because we just finished the, oingo, the first oingo boingo arc in our part three series. Yeah, I guess we're also going to give a shout out to all of our other side podcasts we do. We yeah. do a part three podcast, which as you said, we just did Boingo. We do a part six podcast where we're talking about the anime, which will be more relevant in like 20 minutes. Yeah. And oh yeah, also Attack on Titan. Read that one or watch that one too. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> With Joe Tack on Titan. Tight Sam. Wait, Jim Tack on Titan. No, not called that. It's, <laughs> it's called Joe Tack on Titan. Joe Tack on Titan. Okay. So, so yeah, but, but there's not much Joe's gay in this. It's more, this is a whole horse focus, like like a pilot episode or pilot chapter so yeah what i want to specify so this was written by kohei kodano yes who did if you're familiar with uh purple haze feedback the one that everybody loves (laughs) yeah so purple if you're not aware there's an official i think it was like a contest that araki had where it was like um writers got to like whoever won the contest got to like write the like content for a light novel and Iraqi did the art. So I think that happened two times. I think it was George Joestar and Purple Ice Feedback. I might be a little bit wrong there. But uh so it's really highly recommend. I've actually read Purple Ace Feedback. It's uh famously it's about um what's Fugo. his face? Fugo. It's a kind of like a Fugo side story. It's like we don't have, we didn't really have a Fugo arc. Here's a Fugo arc. Yeah it's and it canonically takes place like after yeah. part five too. So it's it's almost like a 
a epilogue. pseudo sequel, a, a sequel, kind of epilogue, a sequel yeah. epilogue fusion. Highly recommend. It's very cool. I don't know what the canonicity is. Like, I don't know if these are canon. No, pe- I the, don't really care. A lot of people treat it. That's why people treat it as canon. They like people like were begging for like an OVA of it, or like even like All Star Battle. Like I, I mentioned, like just like uses that as like the Fugo story for the DLC for that yeah. game. So there's like acknowledgement of it like across other platforms, but yes. Uh, so and then the art is done by Tatsuku Karasuma. Yes. who is the artist and i think you look Ar- like arthur and and artist okay so of... just the mangaka for no guns life so i wonder if he also has some like helpful like influence as well in the story i can i can feel it see that as well because yeah like... it's it's interesting because like i it's rarer to see like writer uh artist combos in in japanese in the japanese like manga industry yeah. as opposed to in america where it's much more common There's, to like, have like maybe like wait one in emirata yeah, there's well, yeah, one in Murata, I think of uh, Boichi and um, uh, what's his name, the the writer who did I Shield Twenty One. Yes, he who does Stone uh, Doctor Stone. I was gonna call <laughs> Doctor Stone, Stone Ocean. Ocean. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, Doctor Stone is the one that I think of, and I think it's really interesting too because Boichi has like writing chops. Like yes. Boichi has done his own. Uh, he even does like stuff that's like not inside the web comic as, as well. Yes, but he probably gets every permission from one, most likely. Oh, Murata, yeah, yeah. Um. I just, it's gonna bug me if I don't figure out his name, uh, the guy who writes uh, for Doctor Stone. But I I don't got it, so never mind. We'll keep going. Everybody knows Boichi. Someone in the comments, just help me out here. We did uh, a Doctor Stone theory, Jim. Come on. <laughs> it's not. E- oh my god, I- I'm just not gonna pretend. You can literally just look it up right I now as, as, as I as I talk about. You're holding a phone in front of you. I was hoping that you I had the phone. manga up so I can keep my Doctor keypad. Stone writer. Uh, is it like it begins with an I? Inagaki. There we go. There you go, Jim. Okay. I did it. All right. We did it. So let's, let's talk, let's let's talk t- about <laughs> yes. um, Dr. Stone's Demonic Heartbreak. What is Dr. This? Stone Ocean's uh, Demonic Heartbreak. So, yeah, the, the, we're talking about the, Jos- the the Whole Horse Josuke crossover special. Not, not only them, just say. So, yeah, we basically get, like, the Crazy basic- Diamond's Demonic Heartbreak. Yeah, we, get, we basically start with, like, the, the basic, like, I guess, like, the plot of this is just, like, about a bird that got, that was, like, you know, uh, lost in Egypt. And so it takes place March of 1999. Yes, te- like ten, 10 years after Part Three ended. Yes, which is kind of crazy. So this is and like in our stream chat last night, somebody uh, mentioned that Part Four takes place in like April. So this yes, is a pre Part Four. This is a month before. Interesting, like... interesting decision. Not Iraqi. Yes, <laughs> he's gonna have his interaction with with the part three character that Jotaro had like plenty of experience with and, and crippled many of them <laughs> <laughs> mentally and physically. Yes. Well, Dio did it more mentally, but Oh, Oh, is there a few that Jotaro, like the Darby, <laughs> the least one Darby that Jotaro like mind broke. <laughs> so yeah, we have, we see whole horse. We see like, you know, talking about like the parrot gone missing, the parrot that famously talked on in Dio's, <laughs> the uh, no yes <laughs> famously not. from our part three episode that we've argued about so this is apparently <laughs> allegedly this is the brother of pet shop yeah even though really like, <laughs> am it i right like, it's a little, at least like similar like brother in the term of they were both probably trained together yeah because like yeah there was a parrot that's more like a, like a like a more like a parrot not like a fucking eagle or a hawk that like like pet shop is and he, but they have a hell of a hat on him because they have a little you see a little picture of them like the only actual like thing of this bird that probably might have a stand if he actually is related to the pet shop so that's kind of like the the little tease that whole horse is saying here it's like oh well if hey, pet shop was trained by the same dude maybe they a, both have stands it got, he's gonna shoot a bird out of the sky probably and then have josuke heal him that's how they solve a problem <laughs> uh so interesting we get like like more world building than i expected here like yes speed or he uh whole horse here talks about the Speedwagon foundation and how like it mm. seems like they're keeping tabs on the people on like this other people that survive yeah the, the villains they beat up and like and as we learn later like the Speedwagon fin- foundation like kind of like help them like cope with the D- with dio and the whole brainwashing the d deification yeah. if you will but we get we get our, our reentries in the whole horse it doesn't really change where like he doesn't deny a woman's request he's like a, still a gentleman so also he seems to be so he's dealing with some sort of trauma yeah. from Dio. He has notably three watches. So this is something that Mariah like brings up later, but we see him like bring up three watches because... and then he also notes that the clock tower in the town is off by like a few minutes. Yeah. But also because he had the watches when he had the second time with Boingo, where he got the time was slightly wrong and that's why he ended up shooting himself. 
Okay, that makes sense. I thought it might be a reference to like how Dio is, like can stop time, so that makes him like very paranoid about. That probably like, could be on top of that, knowing as well. the proper time. It could be as well, but like that's also I think, especially when he's gonna be going with Boingo anyway. To yeah. Well, so yeah, he he basically had one more request to get the parrot that was like her cause her son trained the bird for Dio. Then D, when he tried to get away, Dio killed him. So oh but, sorry, wait, I do want to say so I was wrong. It's not minutes off. He says the clock tower is eight tenths of a second off. So that is like he's very very paranoid about time now. Yeah, that is like that's probably even a mixture like, of Dio and the Boingo end up shooting himself. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so the, and they say that oh the foundation is probably gonna deem the bird dangerous because he might have a stand. So yeah, because yeah, Petch up his fucking. One of the strongest stand users. What's, what's interesting is none of them fought. Well, is it the Foundation probably doesn't know about Pet Shop. All they know is that they found... So Iggy it, fought him. Yeah, and, he, <laughs> and he killed him underwater. So they probably don't... All they know is that whatever Iggy fought, he he ended up with like one leg, like missing a leg. So it's possible that like... So there's a lot that we're kind of unless doing. Unless they like... They made. They learned it from a whole horse afterwards. About- I think it's it's likely that like there are records that Dio kept. Like all of these people, remember they met. So like all of the yeah. stand users met with Dio. So and, and they probably uh, knew Pet Shop. They probably knew what the and, stand well, and power these, was. These users also talked with the Speedbound Foundation. So they probably like talked about like the yeah, inner they, workings. The of, secrets have probably been spilled of of, like, like, of the higher ups of like the Dio's like higher circle. So, but yeah, it's just like the whole horse. It's just like the reason the whole horse is that he's still the same like gentleman, like ladies man, no matter who he's gonna work for. But like, he's still like a dick that like. Oh yeah, and the way coward. that he like. So the kid is trying to grift him. Yeah, because gets- uh, Kenny G. Oh my god. Kenny G with his with his stand to just fuck up like, the landscape of everything. So yeah, this kid is uh, trying to grift him, and he does like an elaborate trick with the uh, emperor, and he does the fucking thing. So also- while while we were live reading this, like. I was just, I, I kept making jokes like, OMG, I pogged when I see the reference. But there is some really cool references yes. here. Like the part when he, he summons the emperor and it's like inside of his hand. Like I love the, like that image is one of my no. favorite images Rocky ever did of Whole Horse. Not like, only that, just like, he does like, like when you're checking his watch, he like the, 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 um, the artist just does a great job with the poses. Like he has his own art style with the characters, but he still keeps like the spirit, like, like the yeah. poses and everything. I the think Whole Horse poses. In, in the little like author's note at the end of the chapter, uh, one of the, the the thing the author said or the artist said was like he's like when I heard that I was going to be drawing a Rocky Sensei's characters I had a heart attack and died because <laughs> it's like so much pressure but he he really does a great job especially that one there's a single page where Whole Horse is like doing a funny pose with his booty out and it just looks really it looks really good yeah, I don't yeah, know if that's it's a reference to like a, I don't know if it's a reference to like a particular like Whole Horse pose but. I don't know. It could just be him. Like I want to draw my very own like pose. He also like, in the one with the kid. He's doing the Dio walk. He's doing the funny, the low angle Dio walk pose. Just like cowboy poses in general. Like they put like holding the hat down while holding the gun. Like it's just it's just like the cool guy whole horse stuff he does. It, it makes the kid like shit his pants and like gets him in trouble and everything. It's a fun reintroduction to whole horse's power too. Yeah. Because like the very controlling bullets essentially. Yeah. It, it shows like everything you need to know. Just, okay. What I love about this <laughs> is like it doesn't like bog down your time with like a stand battle like it just wants to use stand powers really quick and really fun yeah which is great because jojo's problem like showing off a stand by using it for mundane reasons is always great yes (laughs) and like the problem with jojo as like a long form thing is like most of it is just fight based like we don't see these little scenes with characters interacting like this like part four has a lot of those where like a lot of the stand stuff is just done in mundane activities yeah and then the best parts of part eight are like that as well yes so, and also I just love him disappearing into the Kenny G, like, The labyrinth. art is great. Yeah. The art, like, we already talked about the posing and the characters, but, like, the the actual, like, effects and things that are drawn, like, the way that the stand stuff looks, look really good. Yeah, I just love him going down the hallway, like, saying, Kenny G, to, like, turn off your stand and everything, and then he basically, he basically just, like, has his gun out, though, and, like... I could not believe when I saw the fucking electrical socket. I was like, "Oh my god, are they gonna freaking do Mariah?" And they did, and then she's there. New design. She's freaking there. She's extremely sexy. I mean, her, that is. was she, her thing from yeah. before. She's always like the sexiest character. Like she's like the only female character actually shown. <laughs> she's like the only girl in JoJo. Yeah, she, she Midler was there, but she I was totally going to show Midler like as one of the members of the town was was, was fake getting angry and just having her teeth fall out, or like because she had to wear dentures from getting Jotaro punching her in the face. <laughs> It'd be funny if like half her face was caved in still. <laughs> oh my god. Uh. But yeah, I, I, Mariah's design is still fucking great. Like, I love this design. It's it's, it's different, but like, it's still like so obviously her because she had the sunglasses. It still smokes, has the gloves, and it has her stupid like socket. 
And like having the the first socket there, it just like you know, like her stand because like her stand is very slow. Yeah, the, it builds up, so it just when it actually go kicks off, it gets like at the the worst state. And I also just want to say, like, there's a couple little instances here. Like, I think this is a really well written chapter. Like, yeah, we we already we have the kind of like it, foreshadowing with Mariah. It introduces the characters and return. You know, the whole like you know the whole aspect of it because we go into conversation with her of the PTSD from Dio. Yeah. And, like, it's just a great introduction. Sets up the mysteries and, like... Even, like, small things, though. Like, they set up the the electrical socket. They even set up the darts. Like, yes. Because I that was one thing I noticed. I was like, oh, look, he's playing darts. And then that comes back with her stand, which I thought was really clever. <laughs> uh, I'm really excited where this goes. I mean, we'll talk about that later. But I, just, I'm really impressed by this already. Like, he just had so much love for part three, you could tell. And there's, like, so many interesting stuff that comes yeah. that never got really answered that he can, like, answer in this. And it's awesome. And God damn it, like, this is more <laughs> interesting to me than most of part three. Like, having... <laughs> scenes where characters like communicate their feelings to each other is better than part three having villains like interact with each other the antagonists that we have like also just just a shot of a panel of mariah's ass is just awesome yeah very sexual horny jojo fans got off very well this weekend yeah this month because like we had the food fighters with her big boobs in the anime (laughs) plankton boobies uh we have a new girl a new uh uh we'll get to her soon we have uh what's his face uh kakyoin's uh kakyoin's cousin but uh, yeah. So basically, he says like, "Where, uh, where's your uh boy? <laughs> where's, where's your, your bo- where's your boingo? <laughs> where's your boy Kenny G and my boingo?" <laughs> but yeah, Kenny G is not gonna show up. Unfortunately, to all the Kenny G fans out there. Yeah. So they end up just having like a really down to earth conversation. Yeah, oingo boingo are are just kind of freeloading in in the 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 villa, I guess. I think you'd said it. You'd like this is basically like a halfway house for like <laughs> villains, people who were like traumatized by dio they're of course they're all villains the ones that recover that wasn't just like stayed evil but the thing about the, all the egyptian ones are like they're just all like paid mercenaries for the most part like for like so they probably recovered the easiest because brian brian talked about her just being like loyal to an end but yeah like, i think she even specifically says like i i did that all on my own accord like i didn't have a flesh bud and uh that's, she said, she said that's i don't she said i don't think i had a flesh bud which is but which is probably true because as we learned from uh Okiyasu's dad where he had a flesh bud and when dio died it went out of control and made him the little sludge monster that he is yeah i so i think like yeah i don't know i i i'm, I'm gonna unless, take her on her word um, here unless joseph and abdul crushing every bone in her body counts as like destroying a flesh bud <laughs> but uh i really i just really like this kind of honest conversation that they have like they're legitimately traumatized by the like it's not even the things that Dio did. It's like the idea of what he represented yeah. was so powerful and oppressive to them. Like Cause she, she talks him... about waking up in like a cold sweat well, from like she, nightmares. She, she hits him in the, with the line, Do you still have dreams? And uh, Yeah, do you still have dreams about how it was back then? And like, you know, it's he's like, Oh, I'm tougher. I don't get plagued by nightmares. He's just like, yeah, you're wearing three watches. Like that's something that no, you know, person without trauma would like, it's bullshit. Yeah. Also, we get a nice cool panel of Dio. That's just like, Oh shit. Like I just, I love Dio. I love and, like, seeing Dio. And, and you, every, every like, like facial shot of them, you kind of just see the trauma, like the whole horse, like hiding his face, kind of like, hiding his face and Mariah, but, like you have to see like reaction from her. Like, I he's, his manga for guy who drew, drew a gun headed man like knows how to draw like the motion. <laughs> I really want to read the fucking manga now because I'm I'm really uh, sold by his art style. I think his art looks incredible, and it it fits the characters yeah. really well too. This is it's like you don't get, uh, you only get character of them like tr- being antagonistic, but you don't get this character of like who they are and like how this affects them like afterwards. And like I I love this too because that's like one of my biggest things that I've always thought about JoJo because I remember going through part three the first time and being like. Oh, they're not killing the all the bad guys. Like they're just allowed. They're allowed to live, Ex- well, except for only oh, like, very few that we, like, you know, like Tower of Grey is just dead because he literally just put his body back on the fucking seat. Yeah, but like it's Cause he's I, too I, strong. I just really love. He is too strong. He would just break the universe. Uh, I I just really love this idea of like. So we have. There's probably like some people in the Speedwagon Foundation that they have like a job where they have to like reassimilate these villain stand users into society, and they're basically like a social worker for these like reform villains. I love this fake thing that is in my head now. Like whole like, horse still wants to like, travel. Like he still goes out like and about compared to everybody else. And it seems like so it doesn't seem like Whole Horse is being like. 
forced by the Speedwagon Foundation to do, do this? This is like his own is, personal is this curiosity. Fa- is this a favor he's doing for a, a, the old lady? For the, like, yeah. Feels like he's doing it more because he can't say no to a lady. Which is great because I, I like that more than him being I, like forced to do it. Because remember when we read Enya, like, he was like, you know, very supportive and like try to like, you know, be nice to her and everything because he, he, he sees a woman cry in mourning, and, like, especially someone that he worked with. But then she went and tried to kill him like an idiot. <laughs> like an idiot. If only Enya hadn't done that, he, he would have won. Whole horse Part been three would have been over. Just like, Whole uh, horse wins. Just like what that guy said. Uh, the arm guy. Yeah. Jay Guile. No. Uh, I can't remember part three. Part three is the one thing that will always leave my brain the second that it enters. I'm but, thinking of the, the, the car man. Oh, it's Wheel of Fortune. Yes, Wheel of Fortune. Uh, uh, ZZ Top. Yeah, remember ZZ Top has a funny line where he says part three is over because he yeah. thinks that he killed Jitter. <laughs> hilarious, hilarious. But uh, yeah, Mariah says like, she just, just says like some part of me still thinking I was only the real me when I was under his control. It's just like, and we get a, we actually, that's like, like real like abuse, like like people who are recovering like said, from abuse talk. This is, this is like people who like escaped a cult, like yeah. from like well, all like the documentaries I've seen. Like this is very similar to people who try to get simulate back into it where they kind of like look back at like that's when i was like you know when i lived <laughs> there's more pathos in this single like chapter than there is in like the second half of part eight <laughs> it makes Dio like way more of a villain in this like too yeah i'm just like what he did to people and like we kind of got that just like how he like got these people like to join him and follow his path we even get a little panel of her in her, in her part three outfit like which i love and she, but she like i even felt overjoyed to devote my mind body and existence to him like very cult like yeah and then we have the funny scene. So it's it's kind of a nice, like, amicable scene between two people who are, like, kind of relating to each other with their shared trauma. And then he calls her a fool. And then she loses her brain. <laughs> her brain shuts off. She, she, yeah, she's she's a very short-tempered, as we learned in, uh, like, part three. I, f- I found this scene to be stupid. But I, l- I forgot that I guess she that's her quirk, is that she's short-tempered. I guess I forgot. <laughs> she's a little short, short circuit, as they like to say. <laughs> <laughs> but, but so he, then she like pushes put, him over onto onto one of her her sockets yeah her electrical it, sockets to make it worse and then we see the tarot cards i love to see like it, it's just cool because you know you get you guys were so indoctrinated by the standings that we don't forget to see the, like the actual tarot cards show up in the background yeah i love uh i love seeing those tarot cards because i think the designs are always really cool and then yeah she just destroys like like a locker full of swords and it's like towards just chase into a they never get the goofy like whole horse is still this goofy like loser that just has to like deal with this shit so wait i want to i have a question here so mm-hmm. do you think she made him she, no he shot the the locker himself like is he running towards the door i wonder i mean it could have been he like yeah he ran to the door and he tried to shoot like the uh the darts out but the but maybe the magnets went in it they went into the locker room or like yeah okay so yeah i'm Maybe that was part of her her genius big brain. Maybe plan. or just it's just whole horse being a fucking fuck up. Because so. she he's definitely shooting. He's definitely intending to shoot the the darts. Yeah. But then he yeah he ends up opening the sword chest, which is hilarious. I love the idea that there's in like Egypt. There's just like a chat like a a, a closet it, full of fucking <laughs> what are those swords sword. called? Uh, one of them, s- hey, one of them could have been Anubis fished out of the <laughs> sea. But but yeah, then we see Boingo ten years later, just still looking the same gremlin himself. Uh, also, I love the way that Whole Horse saves himself here. This is a great, like, quick... Like, as I said before, I love the idea of a stand battle just being, like, two pages long. Like, have, like, the tension of the, the danger and then have him, like, cleverly kick the door closed so it stops the swords. Very good. Like, yeah. we don't need any more than that. Like, give me more character interaction. Yeah, I say Boingo shows up. He's Very like, good. We love Boingo. Saying he's gonna... Oh, I, I, it sucks. I have to join you because the book says so to go to Japan. <laughs> Boingo is such a, like a weird character. Like, uh, like imagine having that stand and just basically doing everything it tells you to do. That's why he's like kind of like like just dead inside for the most part. It's kind of like a weird form of like I know there's a lot of discussion about in part five how like everyone is kind of like a slave to their own destiny, like the whole sleeping slaves. Yeah, thing. You're, you're slave to the Boingo manga. Yeah, you're slave to this you're shitty th- manga. You're, you're you're slave to Thoth. To Thoth. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's it's kind of fun. Um, it's just a fun little scene. We... I, I like whole horse. Like, stop thinking about me. I'm gonna end up in your fucking book. Which is, it's very hilarious because, like, in a way, that's a way to kind of subvert the fate, like, uh, prediction quality of Thoth is like just not associate if, with the guy that has the book. Because it follows Boingo's like adventure, yeah. not like you know everything in the world. It definitely does seem like in in the Boingo. Since we just read those chapters, they're fresh in my mind. We do see whole things of like characters' destinies that are like way disconnected from him like we see all the stuff with like jotaro and 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 like all that is like foretold 
Yeah. Um, as, as well as like the the guy that got on the bus and like the so mo- the famous mon- guy wants to be a manga and- yeah <laughs> who dies probably one of the most horrific ways in all of part three yes he's like impaled on a pole Th- like a through the mouth telephone yeah. pole yeah so yeah i mean like little pose was boingo behind mariah like oh i love that classic yeah. mariah. I, just, I just love her design so much in this it so, looks like, really good yeah and just seeing like yeah but boingo is gonna be joining her that caught me off guard i was like oh he's gonna be whole horse and josuke but no boingo's there too it's funny because he literally does not show up for like the rest of the manga even though he's allegedly with him in japan and how awesome is to see the oingo boingo art again i really enjoyed that i mean i I wonder i wonder if he like just like did his own version or like they got like they asked a rocky just to do like one page of like the boingo art because like i'm sure he'd be credited if he did yeah probably Um, so i'm sure that it was just the It, it looks spot on so yeah, so they basically said we're gonna have to go to a town with a really weird name called Morio. Morio, I think, as he says, which is very funny. Yeah. So okay, big question: uh, Does Whole Horse know Japanese? Yes. Apparently, he does. Yeah. He, I said I said this on Twitter because I think Aeon has to take question. I was like, "Cause he's a he's a man that loves women and he needs to like learn the language of ev- of every woman he could possibly flirt with." Where <laughs> that's so many languages though. But he's Whole Horse. Uh. <laughs> he he he. he a guy who did cross country adventures, like flirting with women across the the How way. How old is Whole Horse? Do we know? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Probably, I would say in like thirty. At this mid-30s. point, he must be in his mid mid uh, to late thirties. Yeah, that's, I, that'd be a safe guess. Because he seemed like he was like late twenties and like late part, twi- part three, mid to late twenties. Yeah, and then this is ten years later. So yeah, we, but we cut to S City in Morio, where we see a girl at a gravesite who you know got into university and said it's been ten years since you left us. And we see, because she has, and like, if you didn't notice, because she has the hair, the hair loop. She does have the hair loop. She And she also, as you said, she cherry, has the cherry The cherry earrings. earrings which is like a, a family crest, I guess. And <laughs> Sam, she's Miss Cherry. She, oh my God, you're right. <laughs> that that was actually a reference the entire time. <laughs> but yeah. And uh, we see Dio. We see, we see Dio and everything. And like Cat Queen, like kind of just like telling basically it's kind of a flashback of him just kind of telling her about like just being the flesh bud having the better being loyal to dio and like why did you disappear and it's cat queen's grave man it's great is this like everybody's like fandom like this is what people want to see like yes. unironically people want to see like this see. fucking like student died like overseas like on this adventure yeah and, like what happened after like spouting nonsense about dio and like being like very evil looking it's he's... it's really good. Like I really like uh, I like her character design a lot. First off, she's yes. very attractive. She's got like a she's like uh, Kekyoin like did a fusion with Mitsuru from Persona Three. Yeah, uh, she kind of has the same like look. I bet her hair is red too. Probably. Um, probably. Ho- probably hopefully, a... we get a cover. Yeah, for... I hope so. Uh, oh, her so and Mariah. <laughs> I hope so too. Uh, but yeah, her, so... her design's she... fucking great. So we see that she's in Morio. She's a university student. Uh, she actually passes and 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 picks up the funny little manga. Yeah, the manga book that uh that Oingo. But she writes. but she sees the word Dio in it, and which kind of like triggers her flashback of like your evil looking cat queen, and just saying like this is this is related to him. And it's really interesting to think about like this is like our first impression of of Norisuke, not Norisuke. Oh my gosh, Kakuin, Kakuin, Kakuin is like the last thing she ever saw of him. Yeah. So it's it's funny. You have to think about the moment that uh, he was a villain. Like we, we get the the scarf wearing artist that's like cutting limbs for his on his painting villain, <laughs> and like possessing the nurse to like and stabbing Jodor with a pen. Yeah, and this is our this is our a, very brutal like the last memory she has of her cousin. Yeah, it's just, I just like love. I just like it's like. It's another thread they put in there. It makes me so interested to see where this is going to go. And she passes Whole Horse on the road. He lost Boingo because he, he didn't bring his child leash. <laughs> this little gremlin. <laughs> Bo- Boingo, who is now a teenager or p- potentially he, tw- what, he's probably, maybe 20. He's definitely a teenager at least. He, he must be at least 18 years old. Yeah. And he still looks the same. <laughs> yeah. And so we have, we have Whole Horse in there talking to the ladies. As, you know, I can see a boy with shaggy hair and a giant manga. He makes a reference to Ocean. Which is a popular drama from yeah. Japan from the 80s. And yeah. And then we get, um, what's it called? He kind of gets a flashback to Dio. Like, he gets a feeling of Dio's, like, right behind him. And then we get this kind of overt part three reference with the uh, 
This man driving um, was like the cor- Lincoln Continental down the fucking road, running what? everyone over. It seems to be it seems was would have been referenced in like part four. I think this is a pretty major. Yeah, you case. think so? Like this kind of event, like, or, or like saying that that Josuke's grandfather would have. We might see Josuke's grandfather in this. We might actually. The first thing he does in the manga or in the original stories die. So yeah, he has the aqua necklace. He has room to grow. But so yeah, this is kind of cool. Like the- I don't. So part of me is like resistant whenever I just see like. It's like I think of the fucking Rich Evans thing, like ATST, ATST. I know what that is. Yeah, and so whenever I see references that are just like, oh, this is just a reference, I'm always like, eh. But the interesting, but yeah, the idea of like tying it to like whole horse's trauma of Dio and his fear, his existing fear of Dio, like he very feel, cool. He felt his pre- presence as like some like an obvious as we see a stand user was like. But no, people thought it was like Moody Blues, but he doesn't have like the timer on his head and the eyes are different than the Moody Blues eyes. Yeah. They're more like buttons. Yeah, they do, as you said, look like the Coraline buttons. And yeah, he has a kind of a flashback to like when like when Holwer tried to like shoot Dio and like and like and he just teleported behind him essentially. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, Holwer's kind of afraid to like to pull the trigger now because he that PTSD just coming to him like he can't like, he's frozen. So the one line that I think is really stand out is like uh, he's he's in his head he's like Mariah. I wasn't like you. Like, I wasn't just seduced by him. Like, I deliberately followed him until the very end. Yeah. Until he tried to betray him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but he, he gave into the fear. That's the thing for Holors. Like, the Dio thing is just a deeply rooted fear that has not waned since 10 years after his death. Uh, <laughs> I like this. This yeah. is so such a great angle to take a spinoff. Like, like, it's not just like let's see the funny characters do funny things. Gun- it's like let's let's examine the trauma that these like characters the, the former, experience. The former gunslinger going through trauma that can't pull the trigger has a hard time pulling the trigger now, especially when stuff related to Dio is happening. Oh, it's great. That's like that's such a great hook, especially this is the hook for the story. Because like, we see his like hands sweat and like the and, like, sh- and like you know shaking, and he eventually shoots the tire out, which causes the car to flip, and you, you get a better look at the eyes of like the driver. And we hear we hear a Dora. We do. We get a Dora. <laughs> and we see the boy Josuke himself with Crazy Diamond. Crazy Diamond is fucking yoked here. He is mad. Hey, early early part four Josuke was yoked. So he is. Uh, love this this page of Josuke. So, he, so yeah, this is because like Josuke. Oh, you have the same ability because he, he doesn't know what stands are yet. Cause he only learned what stands are from Jotaro. That's true. And this <laughs> takes place a month before he met Jotaro, allegedly. Yes. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so like you have a stand, you have a gun that's appeared out of your hand, so you, you obviously have an ability. So who are you? And that's where we end off. Yeah, two powerful men come face to face. So I was, so I, I gotta assume like since like this is like Kakuin's cousin, she might since she doesn't relate to it, she might have a stand. I'm guessing. I mean, that's the natural progression. Like stands run in the family sometimes. Uh, it'd be pretty freaking cool if she did. I want to see like wh- the new stands of like is he gonna go with a band name or is he gonna go with like and like the color like the color or new go- like Japanese gods? Yeah, we have all oh, that. Be I, l- I really like the idea of keeping like the part three theming. Yeah, uh, even going, though like or maybe go with like Greek gods with the color like be really cool. I'm really excited. I I really enjoyed this actually. I yeah. really enjoy even just going through it right now like talking about it. I'm like. I'm really appreciating a lot of things that I didn't initially appreciate when the first read through. Like, so we're going to talk about the Jolene one soon. And I I came out of that one, like enjoying that one more. But now in hindsight, I'm like, oh, no, this one's way more interesting. And I have more of a hook. This one's like longer. Like, I just, this is more like yeah, 60. Me- it was like 69 pages. Considerably long. Yeah. 63 pages, rather. Yes. Uh, With some somewhere like the credits. Yeah, with all the shout outs and the translation about Oshi and all that stuff. Yeah, but I'm I, I I'm I'm excited to just cover this more, like see where this goes. Like, this getting like, spoon fed some like resolution to part three. It's so good. It's great. Like, if you have to do a spinoff, uh, this is probably the best way to do it. And like, I, I think I mentioned it already, but like JoJo is so focused on fights that we often don't get these like deep looks into character. Yeah, and this is so good. And I, like, it just shows that there's so much to JoJo that you can take these like throw away not throw away but these like one-off villains and like really delve into them like and how much do fun stuff with how them. much stuff do we love in part seven and eight of just like the characters having moments of like yeah less so than the stand battles of just like them just having these like realizations or like i think that's kind of like araki learning later on in his his uh work that he needs to focus not needs to but that it's more rewarding to focus on like i think of like all the scenes with like lucy Steele. like lucy just she doesn't have a stand so her scenes can't be fights or if they are it's like a tension 
very tension yeah. or like yeah and it's way more interesting when it's not it's, it's, justified it's the stealth sequence of characters that can't fight in a, in like a video game yeah and then like part eight like mary jane from the spider-man games yes or the miles <laughs> scenes in those games um yeah oh that was yeah they did that too those sucked uh <laughs> but like we even see an early part eight too like there's so much oh, mystery that I, we spend a lot of time like <laughs> learning about that I, and not just fighting people a better a better analogy than than the, that crabby one the ashley part in resident evil 4 <laughs> well that's that part was like really memorable though exactly yeah, that's oh yeah in, better oh like yeah, i better. thought you meant like or, or the re2 <laughs> stuff the re2 stuff is very good as well in that uh wait you, repl- you play i like that part we play as um what's it called the the as, child as, as a sh- the baby sh- child yeah i don't know if i played those parts you didn't play the claire campaign i did yeah you play you play as um what's it called the baby child you play as a little ashley little, little ashley no Sh- whatever sherry you play as sherry sherry, sherry birkin i don't remember that but yeah, i guess play I as her, oh that's hiding right from like the, yes. the pedo yes 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 <laughs> i forgot all about that i fucking love that part i love that game that game's great uh so but, but yeah i'm excited to see like any any like, any have predictions you want to say here i just really i want to see all the morio characters i want to see i want to see at least a return of two or three i think we'll see because you know rohan's not there didn't move in yet yeah, so we shouldn't really see like uh, Koi- Koichi or Okayasu, we should, but we can totally do like jo- uh, we can see Josie's grandfather. Yeah, jo- that's actually I, a really good one. I think like uh, I'm trying to think uh, maybe Yukako because she's in the school. Oh, I was thinking I would love to see Yukako. Yukako, please. Before she actually really has her stand, I'm like, trying to think of the weirdos. Like maybe you walk. That's she, the thing. Maybe like, they walk by like the the, the the tower and you kind of see the guy. Just, I was like, thinking about that one up too. There, just a good little like reference. That's kind of the problem. Part four is like a lot of it is like just keeping introduced we to a character. I, I hope we don't see Kira and like. No, that would be that would be weird. But I guess it might make the most sense because you probably. This is how you write. This is how you write off whole horse, just get him blown up. <laughs> He's completely erased. Yeah. Like no trace. Maybe um, with harvest you can see. Yeah. Okay, but so but, like whole world has to deal with fucking harvest. Tying it into the plot, like, what is the parrot? Like, there has to be a reason why the, the parrot is a Morio. Yeah, the parrot. It's probably gonna be Kira. It's probably if it's okay. It's called the crazy... arrow because the arrow is in Morio. It's true. Uh, is his is Kira's dad still alive at this point? I don't... did he? Die? I can't remember if he died like right before he... or if he died like years before. Um, he made that year before because he was the photo for like a while. Cause... Yeah. His his spirit lives sure. inside, I guess. But like, cause like you can't meet like oh, it has to be the one. Meet, but Boingo's also here now. Like the the, the bird maybe get, yeah try to see the arrow, but or maybe he's cause uh, Oki Okiyasu's dad as well could be tried to because he had the flesh. Part. I feel like they need to have him included because he's so connected to part three. Cause he ha- yeah, cause he's and like Dio. Yes. There's probably gonna be a moment where like whole horse sees him and like kind of connects with him like in a deep level. Yeah. Like a word, kind of like a wordless connection. Maybe we see, maybe we see bad company. Maybe, I just, I don't know. I'm really like, because obviously we can't do Kira. It can't be like Kira with the bird because Josuke can't meet Kira. Yeah, like we we have to I mean, rule like, out a lot of characters. Oh, they split up. Josuke, Josuke like, can't meet them. The only thing they have to split up. Maybe they split up, and whole horse has the interaction with the part four cast. That maybe I I feel bad about like not bad. I, I feel like I wouldn't like that though. We have to see where um the the new girl. The cat that comes in at too because yeah. uh, she has Ryuka-chan? the book. Ryuka-chan? Well, she has the, the Boingo adventures while Whole Horse and Josuke do stuff. As and then we have the cast all come together because, and maybe maybe another part three character show like a villain shows up, too. Like yeah, think about like the, it's like I think like you know, you could have the high priest like say a Midler show up be really cool. I'm excited. I I, I can't really predict too much because I feel like the world is so open right now. Like it really could be like. We could see strength show up again. Oh we god, I see... hope that <laughs> Anne could show up. Everyone's oh, favorite. That would actually be pretty interesting to have a ten year like. Eight... I want to see Anne show up. That, I love Anne. That honestly could happen because that'd be base. Steve Bagan Foundation and they could actually have a stand. Oh my god, give me Anne, please. That would be uh, very in- Kodano. That could be interesting. Can because <laughs> oh wow, ten years later we actually could do all the sex, the creepy sexual stuff to her now, and it will be nearly as bad. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, I do want to say, like, before we wrap this discussion up, so having read Purple Haze Feedback, mm-hmm. the strengths, I think, in that story mostly came from the original stands that the, the writer created. Because he, he had to, like, limit himself because, okay, I had this broken, our protagonist had this broken stand that can k- kill every anything mm-hmm. instantly, and but himself as well. So I had to, like, play around that. 
Yeah, and the stands in that are like some of the most like extreme. Like it's it's very classic JoJo where the the user uses a lot of like yeah. subversion there's to like, trick you. There's like two different light now for part five. Where one purple is feedback, another one's where, like where like there's a girl who was like the the cure that like goes against because Fu is more of a villain in that one. Golden heart, golden wind, something like is that. that. It? It's, it's like the, the girl has like the cure, is like her stand because it can like, heal anything. Wait, is that not is it is that not in purple is feedback? I don't think so. Uh. Cause that one's like I think Fugu is portrayed more of a villain, where like Purple Haze Feedback, where Fugu is like the main character. Oh, I'm, I'm not. I, I'm only familiar with Purple Haze Feedback. Yeah, there's like uh, two different Part Five ones, if I my memory is correct. Uh, right. hold on. Do, do, do. Yeah, okay. Golden Heart, Golden Ring is what you're talking about. Yeah. So yeah, The Cure is an English rock band. I know. <laughs> um, I'm aware. So yeah, I just from so if you if you want to scare look, look at the lead singer of the cure t- t- 2021 <laughs> um but okay so what i was saying like i haven't uh, got the part six one yet <laughs> with uh what's his face with this writer he was really good at creating like brand new stands brand new characters he did include a few of the original characters mm-hmm. but they were almost like bit parts yeah so i'm surprised that we're leaning so heavily on like that I'm hoping that the this Ryoko character gets more to shine. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, one of like the the side character in the Purple Haze Feedback was a girl, and she's like really cool. So I'm hoping we get like another like cool like female side character. If, if he can write a good female side character, that, that'd be all for it. Because we have someone that can heal and repair, which is perfect for Whole Horse, who's going to end up shooting himself most likely because <laughs> stand, shoot, gun users are, are t- notoriously like famous for hurting themselves with a healer by their side, and we'll have like you know. Uh, we got the gun. We're gonna have Boingo with like predictions, which is gonna be interesting. And then whatever the girl's power might be. Yeah, I'm really excited to find it. I don't want to spoil Purple Haze feedback because I really do recommend it. Someone did an audio book on YouTube. There's an audio book of it. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, which I highly recommend because the guy includes the images as well. So if you don't mind uh putting up with like an amateur reading, which I think is totally it's totally like satisfactory. Highly recommend. It's a great story. It's yeah, real fun. JoJo. I would love to have more. Uh, audiobooks of like the light novels me like that. too because i will not ever fucking read a light novel <laughs> you can put that on my tombstone never read a light novel much like, I love, never fucking as will. much as i love kind of suba i'm not gonna read a light novel true it. that's like the one that would get me to convert uh <laughs> to light novelism so all, all right. right i think do we uh, talk about the uh of uh, jolene's <laughs> masturbation adventures <laughs> okay yes we will but i think we're gonna take a short break first so all right. Uh, we'll be right back with Jolene's Masturbation Adventures. Fujiko's Bizarre Wordly Wisdom White Snake's Miscalculation. Coming soon. <laughs> and we are back. Okay. So, as you said, we're going to be talking about the second spinoff one-shot. So, the other one's not a one-shot. This one is. Yeah. That one's so, a- there, there shall be no more yes. of this. So, so this is a Fu- Fujiko's Bizarre Worldly Wisdom White Snake's mis- Miscalculation by Sho Ayamoto. So, not familiar with the work of this mangaka. I know I've seen something where she's like a really big fan. She loved Jolene, very similar to like the voice actors of just loving Jolene and everything. Which it makes sense because if you think about like these people who are like create like getting into the industry now or starting to like get ahead in the industry, like people who are our age probably grew up with this stuff when they were kids. So yeah, it's like deeply connected to them their de- so, developmental ages before we start should we just like address what the fucking jojo bronies did apparently they're like mad they're they're mad about something that's like an, a bonus thing that they it's literal, don't need to read it's literal bonus content like a fr- like a free dlc given to you <laughs> of this, that you can be considered not canon if you want it to be it's just like literally harmless like fucking get better things to do than to harass like an author yeah apparently so i've what i've heard i haven't like seen really seen it but uh people have been sending so mostly japanese i think they're japanese like uh readers are it doesn't like, matter what nationality threats. you are you're still a jojo brony the reason i said that is because i saw the the message the one message i did see was in japanese so they like responded to her on twitter and said like uh send her death threat and it's like literally fuck you like i enjoyed this i'm i i can like enjoy things uh you don't need to enjoy everything if, if i don't know whatever part six stands are <laughs> there's, like... there's you can not like something and I'm... not be like a total freak hard, hard ass asshole about yeah. it yeah so like i'm like i like do i like julie no but i'm gonna read this yeah and enjoy my time here yeah 
Like, I'm never going to turn down more JoJo content. Exactly. And if it's bad, I'll be like, there's no but... eggs laid in this. Give me, you be happy. Not a single egg <laughs> is laid. Okay, so what did you think of this one? Very mixed about this. It's weird. It's it's really funny because like when I saw the art, I like made a joke. I was like, oh, this looks like it could be like Yuri or something. And guess what? And guess what? in the chat last, when I was doing the reading of the other one, uh, someone was like, yep, it's a Yuri. I, I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure the translator that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Up. Cindy said, yeah, they're like, yep. Uh, very funny. So if you're not familiar, Yuri is basically just like uh, female, female romance manga bait. It's kind of like a bait thing. Les- uh, it's lesbian manga. Yeah, lesbian. But it's like. Let's yes, <laughs> it is, but it's it's oftentimes Yuri is like more for like a male audience, uh, generally. Um, not all the time, and of it's, course it's, it's, it's not. That, it's that Spike TV demographic going. <laughs> um, of course it's it's not like hard fast, but you know what I mean. Like, uh, yeah. Well, Yuri on Ma- ice, male gaze. Well, Yuri on ice is is for females. Like this is for men. <laughs> this, is, this is the female version of Yuri on ice, and not to say that females cannot enjoy this. Of course, they no, can. no, no, no. Female like, presenting individuals. It's just how you can enjoy any content you like. It's true, but you know what I mean. Like we're talking about, like general Japanese demographics, like how so, they're presented. Yeah. So somehow this is just like a. This is literally stated as just like something that White Snake scrubbed out and no one remembers anyway. So it's, literally forgotten. This is the funniest way to do. This is, like, this like is, a fanfic. Like, like, <laughs> it's a many, fanfic. How many shitty stands does White Snake have in its arsenal? Incredible. But, like, this is potentially, like, a very strong stand. Well, we know this is a stand that Kakyoin used in the beginning of part three. <laughs> yeah, sure. The same exact stand. Yeah, sure. Uh, when he is. drew the picture of just Jotaro. And I don't have to say Jotaro looks real scuffed in this first page. <laughs> he looks so fucking funny. He, he, looks looks like, he looks like a doll. He does look like a doll. Um, I like Jolene's design a lot. I really like the character designs in this. Like, all the girls, I think, look I really like good. I like some of the, the, the hilarious, like, face reactions, but we see... Star our, Platinum and the disc looks really bad. But we see... Oh, yeah. We do see our girl, Gwes, though. I freaking pogged and I pointed and, at the and, screen when and, I saw Gwes. And just like usual, we can't have nice things and she is irrelevant afterwards. I, I'm going to take this as a W because this is more Gwes than I expected to see, and... Also very funny. I like how they kind of use her to like tie into the plot. It's kind of funny. I like this first half more because it's just like jail interaction stuff. It's Which is like... my favorite part about part six. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. We're just like, you. this is my, di- like, they're arguing about the room and everything. Of like, how'd you get this picture and everything? These rip it from a magazine. Gwest just being like a perpetual freak about everything is really funny. Like, like a territor- very territorial. No matter what happens between her and Jolene, she will never not be a weird fucking freak. And then we have like Ermi's Foo Fighters and Jolene having weird like cafeteria conversation about Foo like, Fighters is so cute in this art style. I love the way she looks. She looks very good at this. And then just like talking about like putting meat sauce on pancakes like a fucking freak. It's just great. Like, I just this is like my like comfort moment of like, uh, before b- before the prison. What is it? The high maximum security arc. Yeah, this is like my little comfort. Wholesome prison. Yeah, <laughs> conflict. So this is like we get, we get our first like, introduction to like the, I guess the the enemy or the uh, the the, the new the character. En- the enemy stand user. <laughs> and uh, this, if you take out half of this panel, is it just like what JoJo Bronies are like waiting for part nine? I just like just draw it already. I can't sleep at night without it. I started pulling my hair out. I feel like I'm dying. Just cut the half <laughs> off. It's just JoJo Bronies waiting for part nine. I think this is honestly like a this very is, kind of relevant or this like is very re- relevant. Re- it's like a very relatable like this thing is too Twitter about artist. like commissions. Yeah, she's literally just a Twitter artist, and like she talks about like having too many commissions. She's like, "I'll get to you when I get to the, the, the you on the commission." The queue. eighteen, unless they give you more money, and then the eighteen plus commissions as well as they get. Which hysterical. We learn that what she's what this woman is requesting is Deadpool x Spider Man art, which is. Because like incredible, so, so I had to do. I was like, okay, this takes place in 2011, correct? Yes. And like at the time, like this is like before like Deadpool became that mainstream like like uh. It's true. Because like, well, the Daniel Way comic was very big. It, That's, it was, that, it that was, was like that's at what the blew, time. That's what blew it up, but like it didn't really hit the stride of just like com- it's mass a, public like, ma- merchandising. Yeah. Until like the later t- 2000s. Yeah. Once the movie hit. Uh, which even, was though, even before the movie, it was, like, culturally, like, huge. But, like, it didn't, like, you know, like, like blow. Like, this was before. It didn't even was big in comic world, as, but, like, you know, 
it's just, it's just funny that like this is just like canonically just like yeah this probably would have been blown up at this point like it's yeah it, it makes sense i think i can't remember when that first movie came out it must have been what like 2013 or something 2013 2014 uh but yeah no deadpool had been like a known because co- everyone loved deadpool because he was random in chimichangas yeah wait, 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 wait until the daniel way run yeah that, that, but like that in like really in uh, the, the uncanny x-force run was also a very popular one but yeah and that would have been like 2006 no that was a later the later? uncanny x-force was because that was like that when we got into comics which was like 2010 through maybe until like nine maybe i think it was later i think that really? uncanny x-force was like coming out when we were getting into comics but that was another thing that more. got more like when i mean like we we got into a period where we started buying comics like weekly yeah and that was like 2011 i think but but yeah it's, it's just fascinating you know, i don't think like the the deadpool spider-man stuff didn't come until like later like to like the 20 teens at least though which is funny yeah, that's that's really hilarious. Uh, but yeah, she she looks like Toko from Danganronpa. Yeah, I love her design, with, with, oh, with the exception of the eyebrows. Yeah, the eyebrows because there's a character in um I used to read Blue Exorcist. There's a character that has, has this kind of like in eyebrows. Blue, Blue Exorcist. Oh, Blue the manga Exorcist. I used to read forever ago. <laughs> I haven't read it forever, but she had like like basically the square eyebrows essentially. I never understood what this is supposed to be because like my sister, I've never cos- seen sister- anyone with eyebrows like that but in real my life. My sister she cosplayed that girl from Blue Exorcist with the eyebrows and everything. That's funny. So. Is it supposed to be like? I don't know. Is it just supposed to be like a shorthand for like someone whose eyebrows are like really, I, really like short, or like maybe they're so light that they kind of trail off? I don't know. I don't know. I'm um, not an eyebrow person, but yeah, she comes. She approaches like Jolene essentially, just for a quick, a quick sketch. And she gives her. She gives her. Uh, what's the word? Her her rate. Her rates. She's like. Well, hundred dollar and one nude is a hundred dollars. If you well, want two two nudes, it's two hundred dollars. Before that, she she busts her with like, oh, I heard about the guards caught you. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. So the reason why she pressed Jolene, which I, this is actually like a good kind of like a good bit. Yeah. Like she mentions the it's, whole thing. It's about, a cafeteria gossip going on, which is like we were like, oh yeah, I remember going through a memory that Hermes told told me my person on the body in that, and just like Hermes, why are you fucking talking like that? <laughs> yeah, it's it's very funny. Um, but that's the reason why she like approaches Jolene. And then she gives her her commission ratings. Or I I do how much love charges. I do love when she's like gripping Hermes like when she told her like about the pairing nudes like mo- like mo- pricing. They both like blush up. It's so good. Yeah, she talked about like she sells shunga. Sh- other, Shung- like, shunga? shunga shunga. But yeah, Japanese erotic art basically just said like he basically just does. It's called hentai. It's art. I really do like that she when she's talking about the shunga, she like does the thing where she puts her she makes like. The, the ring with her fingers and then she puts like the pencil through it like to illustrate yes. sex which I, is very funny i, I know uh, it's sex is, but yeah, she basically says like she, she, she basically like, you know, just about the art of of just nudes and, like wrote and like the romantic stuff about it this is a very like iraqi yes like this feels like a very iraqi tangent where that she's like oh yes erotic paintings and sculptures have existed for years and years even ancient papyrus had like and this feels like such an iraqi inclusion like this the, feels very like, in spirit with what a JoJo stand fight is, yeah. honestly. And, and then she inherits, like, the Jolene's, like, simp mentality of just, like... Because look at her. Like, look the second lips. she sees her, she's like, oh, my God, you're so you're so hot. Your cute lips. This your, long, your slender neck secretly... Means you're, oh, she also says, like, you can, like, learn about people. Like, her cute sort of love means she's bad luck with men, which, yes. This is another extremely Iraqiism of, yes. like, a character that just has knowledge that, like, transcends logic. Like, telling your fortune yes. through... Yeah, which is, yes, like, a yes, very, yes. part three has that a lot in multiple... Like, like, remember how, like, the, the way, the thing we read in part three where, like, the way your your fingers oh. are when you put your hands together would tell you if you're a man or a woman in your past yes. life? <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> so much, like, little, like, nonsense stuff like that I love. And then Jillian stops her when she drops her chest, and she just, she does, like, a, like, a, like a Rohan qu- quality of, like, getting it done in a rapid pace that's, like, inhuman. Yeah, and it's a nice little sketch. I really like this pose. It's kind of similar to the pose that Whole Horse did in his his one shot. Actually, it's kind of funny. I, and I well, uh, not a one shot. As, no. as a Her- Hermes fan, I love her smug face. Just like your boobs are a little big and your waist is a little thin. There, very funny. Hermes gets a lot of character in this. Which I is love really Hermes. Fun. I'm glad. I enjoyed reading this. Like, I don't know why people are so mad. I, I enjoyed the, I enjoyed this first half more so. Like the resolution to this is just like I don't know. But so she actually so she buys the sketch and Jolene is like I I love how like happy Jolene is because like. If you've ever been in that position where someone like does a nice drawing of you, like it is very flattering. Yeah. And, like Jolene is very flattered here. It's very cute. 
like yeah it, it's like it's like it's like seeing a nice comment on our video it's just like super nice <laughs> and flattering like we love to see it. it makes our day and there's so, so one thing that jolene says i actually really resonated with this little line so i just want to read it because they're they're talking about like why would you buy that like it doesn't do anything for you and jolene says but it's the little things like this that truly make you feel good about yourself and put you at ease I think that being able to enjoy stuff that you don't need is a sign of a great mental composure. And just like that, it's she, great. Yeah, she falls in love with her right away. Like every other person is fucking prison. Every everybody in prison wants to fuck Jolene now. It's very yeah. This character, it's very like lewd. What's the word? Etchy. Etchy is the word that I think of. Like the way that it like zooms in on her lips when she says like "Thank you, Jolene." And the, the glasses like black out her eyes, essentially, or white out her eyes. And then we see a little poochy thing, like saying, "Okay, everything the plan." All according to plan. Yes. Then we get some uh, yoga with our very good addition to the Florida guards of this prison. I was thinking that I love this little guard. With she kind of looks like a fat Jolene with a very dumb hairstyle with like mushroom looking hairs. She's like Jolene and um, what's his Abdul's face? Sec- hair? Secco from uh, no, not Secco. Who's the who's the um the guy at Green Day stand user? Is that not Secco? Is it? It might be Secco. Secco might be Oasis actually. You know what I'm talking I about, right? I was going to say, the hair kind of like Abdul, but like less of them. No, she has like... I, I, I know, I, I, but I could have swore he, like, he had like... He the, has like the same like weird... It was more like, I thought it was like weird like like dreads, like bells in them more so. Stand user. Stand Jojo. Uh, oh, or, maybe it's the stand I'm thinking of. Hold on. Uh, What's his freaking name? Okay, you're kind of right. He, they're, they're, they're more like dread-like. Oh, it is Seko. I'm right. I'm correct. Okay. Oh, wait, no. Seko, I don't care. Uh, Chocolata is his name. Yes. Yeah, he. You're right. He does kind of have whatever. His hair is like more, more like dread. Like, it is like kind of Julio more, dreads. More dreaded. All over the place dreads. Uh, Seko's his little boyfriend. But yeah, we get we get them yoga where Jolene literally doing hentai faces. She does do the uh, 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 what is it ahigo ahigao face. Added to the hoodie. <laughs> Added to the, the, hoodie. the people that own over the hoodie to say another one for the collection and just like <laughs> sew it on. I really do love the the female or this uh, prison guard's fe- like oh, reaction. I was like, wait, I was like, where are you gonna go with the female? Like, uh, <laughs> I like the prison guard's reaction where she's like, Jolene, that's not the right pose. You're doing the cat pose. Like, I think it's funny that this guard is like an expert in yoga. Because you know when you're when you're getting all hot and horny, the, your poses are going to be different yoga poses to, to play it off. All right, so they the rest of this is just kind of like an etchy like she she, she, she gets she, like hit by the guard and she likes it because she's so horny she, she tries to like distract herself from the horniness by stabbing herself with a pen but then she becomes darkness from katasuba and just enjoys it <laughs> there's a very funny line where she said this is weird ever since i ate lunch i've been super horny which is <laughs> very funny <laughs> line to me she thinks that it was like the food that makes like i don't know if that's really a thing there's all these urban legends about like food like certain foods being aphrodisiacs sure but... Like I they mean, say chocolate is like an aphrodisiac. Yeah, that's why there's all those standard like Valentine's Day gifts are just like like, like chocolates and like yeah. strawberries or like Se- of... the sex foods. The, the... <laughs> any any innuendo foods. Yeah. A banana. Eggplant. Eggplant. <laughs> and... Um but so Jolene immediately is like, Oh, this is a fucking stand attack. And then uh... while she's like cooming. Yes. And we have some Poochie giving some uh some information dumps. She's a, she's, a she's Japanese. Japanese. She's Jap- Japanese born. Raised in America though. Loved to draw when she was little. Has a bad temper. Maybe try to stop her from drawing. She's really a Danganronpa character. That's like she is a Danganronpa character. Yeah, yeah just like a quirky, like overly obsessed with one thing, and has yeah, and their quirk. Well, she is this Toko, but she was the ultimate art like yeah. artist instead of the ultimate like writer. She's too cute to be like a JoJo, especially. She's too cute to be a part six antagonist. Yes. Like they're always like weirdly like over designed like she's such a simple design in comparison to like even Gwes. like uh, yeah but then we we learn her stand well, bad romance but, yeah, well, yeah he he put like he put the memory disc bad romance which fun fa- you seen the bad romance music video um maybe forever ago the stand is like looks like one of the white figures from that bad romance oh, music video I, i'll cool. pull up a picture but i this is my favorite my favorite lady gaga song I think really? it's her best one. Uh, my my favorite's the other stand. Uh, Born this way. Born this way is my favorite. I Lady Gaga I song. love Bad Romance. It's a jam. It's like the one of the few Lady Gaga songs I I, I will, like no problem listening to. I I think Lady Gaga is like pretty good musician actually. Oh yeah, I like, I, I like she's her super stuff. talented. I just like you know some of the, like, the early songs that but, like before she like, gave her like freedom. Let's see if I can find like. <laughs> she's just doing whatever the fuck she wants now but she's like in an american horror story and shit i think she always wanted to be more of an actress rather than like a that's why she does like musical musician not the, not the best picture i have for you but you can kind of see the outline of it Let me see. it's like a very oh yeah it does 
That's really interesting. Yeah. Wow, that's I had no I had no idea. Better, I yeah, think this is a one for this you. is a really cool little like reference. Yeah, um, it's a cool for design, like for a design standpoint. We don't really see the whole stand. We just kind of see. It's kind of like in part eight how sometimes we'll just see like the upper body of a stand. Yeah. Actually, a lot of JoJo. There's sometimes like we don't know what the stand's whole body looks like because it was like, only drawn like, like twice. We, like we got the end of part eight with like the Herbert Purple showing. Yeah. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So the stand bad romance has us control over the emotions of anyone that receives a, dr- a drawing from her, and she pours, and she pours her hearts, her heart into the into the art. They pour theirs out for her. So she is. So what is happening here is because she's attracted to Jolene. Like Jolene is feeling also attracted. Like she's feeling horny. She's starting to sh- like r- the emotion is horny. <laughs> he's already like ripping off her jacket. I also let me see Stone Free, which I I think it looks not good. This is I forgot that Stone Free even showed up. This is like the worst version of Stone Free I've ever seen. Yeah. So yeah, she like, she's attracted to the pain, like we, like we said, and I just like this is the, my favorite part is just Poochie's reaction to this shit. He's like, wait, no. Don't do this stuff. <laughs> Poochie looks so cute. It's really funny. But so, okay. What I kind of like. The white snake reaction. Just like, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, stop. No, stop. <laughs> you're, you're drawing her as like a, an angel. So I actually, I think this is really funny. <laughs> He's like, I think the light is like, this isn't Shunga at all. <laughs> 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 it's like the funniest thing so he's depicted or she's being de- depicted by fujiko as like the virgin mary and like all these like biblical references and then we see we cut back to jolene here and jolene is like ascending to godhood he, like, he, he drew her as the virgin mary and the archangel gabriel and just like she's like you like i gotta stop sending people with this you just simp over her like people fall in love with her way too easily and so what i like here is like he he brings up the idea. So ultimately, he he removes the stand from Fujiko, and the the effect stops. But he he brings up the idea that like could could Jolene have like ascended to like heaven just from like this effect of this stand? Like it this could've. woman simping for Jolene so hard that she was gonna like transcend because everybody's eyes are like on. They cannot take their eyes off of Jolene when she's doing like the pose and everything. So this is kind of like an NTR manga where like Poochie is the one being like cucked <laughs> from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you have to make the like, illusion like the Buddha and everything with how he attained enlightenment, and like, yeah. So basically, he like, they give her some kind of spiritual power. The fear was that if Fujiko kept drawing, she would literally make Jolene like I just think a it, god. It's just funny that like he's like one of the stands he just stole from someone else. It's hysterical, and I I was thinking like, what other stands could he like use? Like, he remember, remember he got Highway to Hell. He got like he got a uh, like whatever like. uh What's it called? Emporio's mother probably had a stand, whatever her ability was. He's like some of the weird. Uh, he got a uh, uh, survivor probably from someone. Like I was just like, like why are you getting these like from these people? He's collect. He's got to collect them all. Apparently. Um. But so it's very funny. The ending is like a gag where like oh White Snake erased everyone's memories. She never. Yeah. She never existed because <laughs> that's just how like White Snake can just do whatever. Uh. Yeah. And then Jolene is like, wow, I feel great. <laughs> yeah. She suffered a minor injury to her, to her right thigh, which healed right away because you know. Stab, that's how stab wounds go. And uh, yeah, Fujiko Fujiyama returned back to her former amateur erotic ar- artist self. But she had less less patrons, which sucks. Which makes all the artists just got really sad about that. Yeah. Then when she got canceled by the priest, by the church. <laughs> canceled by the church. She never made her money back. So, yeah. All right. And that's, that was uh, our uh, Fujiko, our little discussion I, about Fujiko's bizarre uh, erato system. It's interesting, but like I have very like, mixed on it. Like, this is just like... A, I, I, I appreciate it for exactly what it is. Like It's a silly little erotic it's manga. Harm, it's a harmless, yeah, erotica, a weird Jolene erotica that someone got published in Ultra Jump. This just shows how uh, sexually repressed JoJo fans are. That the second that there is like a little bit of like lesbi- like lesbianism in the manga, they immediately lose their shit. Uh, lesbian, I was like my, my JoJo, just man on man gay. Like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're, they're misogynist, but they're also... <laughs> they're like leaning in the other direction <laughs> like no men only <laughs> men sex only no women women are gross man ew, ew. um but yeah and i'm like and i'm just like out of all the characters like jolene to have this is most likely to would be most likely to encounter this kind of like stand like she's the most like like pro like sexual joe star she next, is. next to probably joseph she's the only joe star that we know that feels sexual shame immediately yeah. when we well, she's like to her. she's the most sexual like on page where joseph is like off off manga like off the parts like sexual predator 
<laughs> sexual predator. <Yeah. laughs> Calling Joseph a sexual predator. Uh, I might fight you on that one. He spied on his mother while she, well, she was oh, bathing. Oh, he did do that. He did spy on... But he didn't know it was his mother. Does that make it better? <laughs> he's still spying on a naked woman while she's privately bathing. Yeah, that wasn't good. That wasn't a good moment, Joseph. And then, Shame. And then he cheated on his wife. I hope that Josuke found out about that so he could cancel his granddad, his, his father <laughs> online. His rich, like, real estate <laughs> owning father. Who at the time would be, like, 90 and, like, literally <laughs> deaf and blind and this, couldn't this hear is anything. The, the, the JoJo equivalent of, of like, this, the, the Bill Cosby trial. <laughs> You're just canceling Joseph, Joseph. <laughs> For the but, horrible things he did uh, in the 40s. But I saved the world by setting a god in his face. <laughs> he also was best friends with a, a Nazi. Nazi. <laughs> oh, that, 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 canceled would, that immediately. would come out. Joseph like, Josar Mia get canceled for that. <laughs> That's all amazing. But uh, overall, I, the whole horse one I feel is a lot better, though. I'm so much more interested in, like thinking about that and like seeing where that's going to go then like revisiting the Jolene one the Jolene one just is going to be lost into the whole of doujin yeah. manga where Whereas like there's a ton of hype around the, the whole horse one yeah with like the egg it would be there with the egg and all the other like weird doujin th- here of uh, like, cars hanging out with komodo friends or like the, it's really the, the weird Russian mo- Russian one I was I looked at when I was trying to find this one it's really funny to like be here when it happened like because, like, the, the whole thing with the Jodo Kak, like, the, the clamp one about, like, Jotaro and Kakuin, like, laying an egg, that one is, like, a legend because it has existed for decades. But this is, like, we get to see this one happen. In and we get, to, we get to live with this knowledge. Yeah. And presumably die with it eventually. I'll forget about it. I won't. I'll, I'll remind you every day. I'm like, remember the time when Jolene got a big orgasm from... <laughs> Yeah, it's, <laughs> just, a pen. it's like every time I t- we talk about Attack on Titan, like, man, remember when Aaron touched a boob and almost had sex with a MILF in that movie? <laughs> and not, the, not the anime. No, not the anime. In the live had, action yeah, movie. The, best, <laughs> the most amazing. Anime time. Aaron would never touch a boob. He, he hates women. He hates women. <laughs> he, just, he, just, he just wants to, like, he just, just, wants, he just wants chaos. He just wants chaos, yeah. And, and to uh, cry. He wants a big and cry. And cry to me. <laughs> Let the boy cry. <laughs> Hey, hey man, movie movie Mikasa wants to have a weird experience with not Levi, <laughs> where where we have anime Mikasa who's completely boring. Yeah, she doesn't want to do anything with anyone. <laughs> All right, that's enough Attack on Titan talk for this uh, little special. Oh, it was a Christmas episode. I wanted to incorporate more Christmas themes. Oh, too late. If you don't worry, going for an hour. The Christmas theme is that we have this present of an hour long episode. Yeah, this is a little. Think of it as like you you woke up, you brushed the the hair out of your eyes, <laughs> you ran downstairs, you saw a big Joe Cock, uh, Joe Kaka, uh episode. A big on, Joe Cock, as you Jim saw, said. You saw a big Joe Cock under your tree. Um, <laughs> That's be called a U log. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. The joke. Uh, good one. The Joe log. The Joe log log log. The Joe log. The Joe. No, we can eat. Okay, uh, Yule log and Jolene. We're almost there, but I'm not gonna make that joke. Yeah. Uh, All right. I don't think I have anything else to say. I think this no. was a fun little Christmas special that had nothing to do with Christmas. This is our nice filler arc while we're waiting for this is our part nice nine. Yeah. So yeah. So should we close it up? Uh yeah. What do you want to do? Do you want to? Uh, what, what's a funny joke about cl- doing closing plugs? Uh, she said, "Close up her legs after like being so hot and horny." <laughs> she, she said it, not me. Yeah, there we go. All right, do it. That's the, that's the only thing I think of for this. <laughs> she, close up the commissions. Close up the commission list. Yeah, <laughs> do it, Sam. Uh, thank you so much for listening. As we already plugged everything with like, uh, <laughs> we proto plugged. Yeah, we we check out our part three series if you're into part three mood if you're into part six mood it's our part six and slices you didn't even we did freaking part five anime podcast when that came out yeah forever ago part we, five and parts yeah even our what little a tech terrible of, name why do we keep that was terrible because name. we gotta go that 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 alliteration with the the pp we got the pp the so PP. now we have part six and slices which is pisses pisses yes even actually better. it is part six and slices on sundays so it's like pisses sauce so <laughs> sure and they mentioned <laughs> we have our attack uh, on titan series where I'm watching it for a lot, most of it for the first time, and Jim already has. So we're at some... the very end it... of the existing anime. Yeah, the, the waiting for season five, no, season four, final, whatever to come if you, out. If you want to hear some, if you want that, you need that pr- that uh, prediction uh, into your ears. That's where I, I can come in for that. Yeah, <laughs> Sam is hilarious at predicting everything about Attack on Titan. He's a humongous brain. He knows everything. The biggest brain. He's always like predicting things like ten episodes before they happen. It's very funny. I got the biggest, the biggest prediction brain. This, this <laughs> podcast kind of helped. So yeah, and uh, you also can follow the podcast on Twitter or Media Separately so you can get some uh, cues of when episodes do release. 
Uh, you can also join the Discord to talk about these chapters as well. Yes. Um, also, don't forget to ring that bell yeah. on YouTube. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Ring the freaking bell. Yeah. And as we said, show some love to the to the trans the translating team as well. That they, all their links are also inside the end of all the chapters. So yeah, big definitely. thank you to them again. Like you guys are the real MVP. We have to talk about all this stuff. Yeah, we would never uh, <laughs> us us pathetic gaijin who cannot read Japanese would never be able to understand any of this we would just it, look it, at the it, pictures of jolene it'd be the image of gaston with the book from beauty and the beast and just like looking at it very yeah, confused that's me all the time yes uh yes and with so. that we'll see you in the future i guess what we do have is we do have to do a year a jolene review i'm not sure how many let it be shorter i guess but yeah presumably we have to do that for but yeah and i guess waiting for jojo lands we'll probably do like maybe a little when jojo lands gets announced we'll do like maybe a little stream where we just talk about how excited we are yeah or maybe I'll be a broke Akai just talking about like some Jojo Land. Oh, like, that's a good fight. idea. Yeah, maybe just squeeze out get, some get the gang back together. <laughs> <laughs> the the yeah. nonsense gang. The Duane gang. Duane Wait, no, gang. I'm sure that name isn't used for something. All right, <laughs> that's probably a podcast. It's probably a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> a, a more successful podcast. Probably. Uh, there are a few that are. There are a few that are. Few okay. That are. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas. Happy New yes. Year. All those funny little enjoy, holidays. Enjoy all your holidays. Like your, your winter solstice, if you don't want to f- put the Christ in Christmas. We miss Hanukkah. Uh, Hanukkah was early this year. Kwanzaa's coming up. Yes. Uh, big ups. Uh, big ups. <laughs> big ups to Kwanzaa. Big ups to. Uh, is there another one? Christmas. That's the one, right? Christmas. That's the big one. Sure. New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. <laughs> All right, this is dumb. Let's your, your, this. your bit has gone on too long. <laughs> and with that, yeah, we'll see. We'll see you with hopefully in 2022 with some big shit. Big Big shit. shit. All right, goodbye. Goodbye.